All right, per usual, recording this a few days in advance, but I don't think there's anything that's going to switch this up too much, so let's get to our May 2022 power rankings. Uh, what happened in May? Actually, a whole bunch of events, despite um, in some ways feeling like a slowdown. There was a lot going on. Uh, Tezuka's hand tourney and the first survivor tournament began. These are very early on, and I tend to give credit for people making the later rounds, so... Uh, basically, I'll ignore those for now, but they did begin, and hopefully they'll be important factors in the June ranking. Uh, there were two GBs. There was one weekly open, uh, so it feels maybe a monthly open would be the better term now. I don't know. I still call them uh, chat tournaments in my notes, and I won't change that, so whatever, whatever they're actually called, they're all CTs to me. Uh, a fun RE tournament began which we'll talk a little bit more about later, but not much because, again, just started. We're in the qualifier round. Uh, Piggy Man's Proving Grounds concluded with a very tight three-way finals that went into... Um, it happened. Uh, it was all tied up, went to a second round of it to determine the winner. And our main event, Triad Wars 14, reached the semifinals. And as we're, we are approaching the end, I do want to give a lot of credit to the top eight and especially the top four. I don't know about other people, and obviously there are many fantastic players that have never made a semifinals, but semifinals tends to be when I start really feeling like I'm in range of the championship. So, anyways, for me it's a it's a big moment. I, I really value the semis. I think it's partially because the first tournament I ever did well in, like, I, I don't know if I, I, I could check, but I'm, I'm lazy. Um, I don't know if I had ever passed around one before, but making the semifinals of Irvine was when I felt like I could win this, and then I, I went out in the semis. But uh, that sort of strikes me as the moment when it feels real that you could win an event. Um, so, all right, our ranking. Number 10, we have Zoom. He got third places in both GBs, and I think... In a different month, this could have easily placed him higher. If you look at previous months, getting two-thirds in GBs often is going to place you around eighth. Here he lands tenth. It's his fourth time making the top ten, and he just has a really overall good GB performance. He also knocked me out of Piggy Man's Proving Grounds comfortably. Uh, that video hasn't come out yet because my videos right now are a mess because I've tried to get the Triad Wars videos out timely. So, so many videos, Clan League videos, a bunch of things are backed up and are going to feel pretty out of date. Um, but hopefully the games are interesting. Anyway, uh, yeah, Zoom beat me in that. He tied the open game really comfortably and then crushed me in the closed. Um, he's, a, he's, had a, he's had a nice month or two. Uh, will it move on? Nope. Will you go to the next one? There you go. Uh, in ninth, we have Tezuka. Um, we've had two tournaments, and in both of them, he has earned icons. He also made the semis in this monthly's weekly open, and well, you know, it's an eight-player tournament. Making the semis is only one winning one round. Uh, he did beat Akiyama to get there, and Akiyama is going to rank very highly, so I certainly gave extra credit for that. Um, this says he's made five top ones. That's a typo. He's made five top tens. This is fifth list, and we move on to number eight, Piggy Man. A uh, very similar resume in some ways to Tezuka. He also made the quarterfinals of Triad Wars after, I believe, having... I feel like they both made the quarterfinals of Nephilim. Am I making this up? If I'm making this up, this video is going to look rather silly. But uh, they so often do. Yeah, Midas lost to Tezuka, and Piggy lost to DJ. Yeah, so they both have, uh, you know, double quarterfinals, both majors, double iconed. Um... But Piggy places ahead of Tezuka, because he beat Tezuka and said weekly open and made the finals, which was quite interesting looking, and I really need to check out the games. I haven't, I haven't done it yet. This is Piggy's fourth time on the list. In seventh, we have myself. I think um, I'm doing kind of hilariously badly in the Fun RE tournament. I've played, I think, eight games, and I have not tied a single one on perhaps the most drawish rule set that isn't, like, no rules non-random um so uh admittedly i would have had a tie if blizzard hadn't beaten me twice and then mouse slipped to the third game to give me the win because uh, that should have been a tie but as is i've somehow managed eight games without a single tie this is to say i'm in the triad wars 14 semifinals and that's worth a lot but given that i have absolutely nothing else going for me this month i i didn't think i should go any higher than this for me 
Um, hopefully I win the tournament and then I can hopefully be first in June because whoever wins will almost certainly be first, um, barring someone else doing something truly incredible. Or the like losing finalist having just a much better overall resume. But, you know, winning majors is kind of what it's all about. Uh, so hopefully I place higher next month. Easily might not. You know, we'll see. Turds played a phenomenal quarterfinals. Again, video on that will be coming out. And I think it's just a really impressive match. Uh, we'll get to that talk later. Sixth, Nemesis Divina. Uh, this is his uh, their second consecutive time making the power rankings, both on the back of Piggy Man Proving Grounds. Last time it was for having a deep run to the finals. This time it's for winning said finals. Um, and went through a tough, uh, a tough path. I think the path, like, obviously, Tezuka, Blizzard, Wavy, Turd, Smokes looks difficult, but once you realize this is a mix of open-closed, it's even stronger than it looks. These are all players I consider well-balanced between the two, rather than, you know, someone like me, maybe, who's, like, just clearly a substantially better open player, and there are, of course, many players who are better closed players, given closed is the more popular format of Triple Triad. But these are all people I consider quite dangerous in both. And so I think this is a really tough field. And Nemesis Divino wins it, having uh, won one and lost one the first go-round of the uh, the finals. And then in the second go-round, I think winning one and tying the other. Maybe winning both? I forget now. Either way, great job to Nemesis. And uh, congrats on winning, you know, one of the bigger tournaments to happen. In fifth, if it will be so kind, there we go. Sir Smokes, he's rather great. Uh, you know, he basically wasn't very active for the initial return, and since February has stepped it up and has made every top ten since then. Here he got third place in a GB. He came runner up in Piggy Man's Proving Grounds, and if he had not sh shown some good sportsmanship, could have been declared winner. Um, and he was a quarter finalist in Triad Wars. Uh, Smokes has a really, really solid all-around resume here, and got him fifth, though admittedly he got a bye into the quarterfinals. Um, so his quarter, his Triad Wars run is no better than our fourth place finisher, who did not earn an icon in Triad Wars, but lost to the same player, Seto, as Smokes did. Now, Delial didn't play near as much this month as he has in a bunch of months. He's... Um, Trailed off a little, you know, life happens, all that, that's okay. But despite that, he's one of three players to win an event this month. Uh, Nemesis Divina is one of the others, and one of them we'll get to. He won a GB and came second in the other, so there were only two GBs. He came top two in both. Um, he was briefly overtaken for top GB score. He is now ahead by quite a large amount. I believe second is 5.38. He's currently at 5.49. That is a pretty huge gap. Um, I was a bit torn between 4th and 6th, but then I realized, like, not only did Delhi win a GB, but then I remembered, or not win, he win a GB, but I remembered what he did in the GB he came 2nd, because that was the better GB. He actually came 2nd with a much higher score. He put up a 6.05 average, which I believe tied Yevon's all-time high score, though as said, he came 2nd, so it's not the current high score, but tied the previous high score... But even more impressively, he won 15 games, which is the record. I believe the previous was 13. Um, he lost only one, so he had 14 more wins than losses, which is just so many more wins than losses. Uh, the thing was, a lot of them were 6-4s, a few were 7-3s, and someone else put up a higher score because they managed to win by bigger margins, which is the goal of the GB. This is not to say Delial should have won, but it is to say... I think Delial's record of plus 14 wins more than losses in a GB is to kind of how I look at things. You know, I've always disliked uh, soccer having a 3-1-0 scoring system. Um, I like, you want the most wins over losses, right? If someone wins two and loses zero, and someone else wins three and loses one, I look at them as equal, or I kind of have a bias to the undefeated team. And I know sports have an incentive to favor total wins because, um, which they phrase that way, even though it also means having more losses if it's going to be a tie break. But, and that is to incentivize not tying games because ties are less interesting. But if we're just looking for what's more impressive, I tend to prefer the fewer losses count. That said, 
Uh, this is just insane. 14 more wins than losses over 20 games in closed, or in mostly closed, is just kind of inconceivable. So, unbelievable run in GB31, um, and he makes top four for the millionth list in a row. Congrats. In third, we have Seto. This is his third time making the list, and basically every time has been, is a major happening? Then Seto is playing, and Seto has made a deep run in the major. So he's now, he made finals of Nephilim and came second, and now he's in the semifinals of Triad Wars 14. And unlike a previous semifinalist we've mentioned, the only one to come up so far was up, he has accompanying accomplishment. He won the weekly open, um, beating quite strong opposition. I forget who he had in the first round, but then he beat, I can look that up. Um, I know he beat Piggy Man in the finals, he beat Midas in the semifinals, and in the quarterfinals, he speaks slowly to try to buy time. He beat Vialva. Yeah, so tough run. Um, there's a case that he should be second, because basically this month what he did was win a difficult match in a major over Sir Smokes, and also win the weekly open. You know, he was pretty untouchable this month. But I think uh, think there's good reason for my second choice pick. This ties Seto's highest finish. Um, of course, if Seto was more active, he would probably have a number of first place finishes. You know, no doubt. Okay, second place, Turds. Um, Turds was a finalist in Piggy Man's Proving Grounds. Uh, he ended up finishing third, but it should be said the bracket reset. It was you know as close a third place as you could come in a three way finals. It was not like, oh, the other two beat him and then played it out for first. Not at all. Um, he finished third in a GB, and most importantly is a semifinals finalist in Triad Wars after playing one of the smartest tournament matches I've seen uh, that we have record of, because it's in the return and we have records of games now. And it made me think, after Triad Wars, I want to do a kind of ranking of what I think the best played matches of the tournament were. I think this would be a kind of fun way to remember a tournament. And, like, when you think of, like, a sport, right? Like, the NBA playoffs are happening right now. And there's, you know, great series that stick with you. And a lot of them are the finals, but some of them aren't the finals. Like, when San Antonio crushes Cleveland in 2007, no one thinks that's a good series. But, like, oh, what's a good series from this playoffs? Dallas beating the Phoenix Suns in this year's playoffs. The Phoenix Suns were the best team during the regular season. They had a sketchy first round, but still looked like a really good team, playing a somewhat odd style, but a really, really good team. The only team to win over 60 games. They won six more games than any other team. And they were facing the Dallas Mavericks, who have one superstar in Luka Doncic, and otherwise looked to my eyes pretty crummy. And the Phoenix Suns went up 3-2 to two and looked like they should clinch it. And then... No, they went down 3-2. to two. But anyways, it was tied 3-3 going into Game 7. And it was in Phoenix. And, like, the odds makers said Phoenix was, like, 70% favorites. And Dallas wins by, like, 35. Just blows them out of the water immediately. Shocking result. You know, series like that. Or maybe you remember series that were, like, really well played. Not so much that it... You know, maybe... Really well-played series on both sides tend to lead to drama, but not so much necessarily about the drama as just this is great basketball. Um, any series the San Antonio Spurs played in 2014 is just kind of a wonderful series, except maybe their Maverick series, which was the closest one. But they just played this beautiful basketball that's fun to watch. I think for a great series to happen in Triple Triad, you need it to go multiple games. All of these matches that I have identified as, I think, really special matches went to at least three games. And I think they're all really interesting matchups that maybe we'll be able to, you know, look back on and think that was really a high level of play. And my current contenders for best matchup are Selder Midas from round one, Seto Delial from round two, and Turd's Piggy Man from the quarterfinals. I think these are the three best played matches. For a match to be great, it has to go multiple games. Which means also the losing player has to play really well, or it's just not going to be a great match, right? If an awesome player comes up against someone who puts up no resistance, it's just hard for what they do to be all that cool or all that impressive, given that maybe anything would have worked. So I also think um, for people I'm mentioning in these matchups, the losers in these matchups are great players. 
But I do think turds, I'm leaning at this point towards turds played the best match of the three. I think Selder did a wonderful job of pressuring Midas game after game. And one of the things that really impresses me about this, and I'll probably talk about this more at some point, but if you just look through the tournament matches, not many matches last longer than like three games. Um, you know, a few go four, but you know, most are three or less and a lot are a bunch less. Which means when someone gets a press, when someone gets significant pressure on the opponent, they're almost always losing within one or two presses. You give them a really difficult spot on move four or move five, and very few players are putting up a survival rate there higher than like 50%. It turns out, you know, you have to find an only move at that point of the game, and there's a good chance you're not going to find it. And so what I really like from the Selder Midas match is Selder pressed a lot, but Midas kept surviving, and Midas ends up losing the match, but he survives like what I'd count as like four presses. I think it's the most what I would count as presses survived of anyone in a tournament so far, um, in any single match. And so, like, despite Midas going out round one following up a finals, and despite him getting clearly outplayed, especially in the early game, I actually think he did something really impressive. Um, and it'll be interesting if we ever see someone survive more presses in a single match than, uh, than Midas did here. Um, and of course, Selder did a phenomenal job just each job, just each game, finding ways to either neutralize Midas's early game plan or immediately attack it. And so I think that's a really cool match. I will, I'm sure, at some point do a video talking about it. Seto Deligal speaks for itself. Um, was it interesting, was back and forth, was elemental, so I still don't know what was happening. I've looked back at game three. I don't actually think Deligal was winning there. I think he did play it the best he could and Seto somehow found a tie. Um, you know, each survived a dangerous press from the opponent, and then eventually Seto broke through. And then Turd's Piggy Man, uh, I kind of want to let the video speak for itself, but I think, because I have recorded that one, but I think I think Turd's put together a brilliant match, and it's probably my favorite match of the three, and uh, it was really inspiring. So that is to say, you know, Turds played so well in his quarterfinals matchup that I kind of value his semifinals berth more than I value it for the other players. Because, again, it was just so impressive. And if we compare to Seto's, like, Seto had a lot of trouble with smokes. Um, and Turds, against a, a similarly very, very strong opponent, absolutely dominated, despite Piggy Man not doing things that were, like, silly, right? Piggy Man played really well that matchup and got dominated. So yeah, uh, Turds fully deserved second place here. He's now been the runner-up in three consecutive months, uh, which is pretty nuts. And uh, yeah, again, just so impressed by that matchup. I will not be able to stop talking about it for a while. I really like the idea of talking about great matchups in history. And uh, when the Turds Piggy Man video comes out, I hope you enjoy it because I, I think it's a special one. And our first place winner, winning his uh, second month in a row, he had not won any players of the month that he had come close many times. He wins the second straight player of the month. He's the only player other than Delial, I believe, that has won two players of the month. And he did it because he's in the semifinals of Triad Wars 14. I also decided to count how many ties each player had conceded, and he has tied for fewest ties conceded so far. He's allowed three ties and won three games. Turds has also three ties and three wins. Seto has four ties for three wins, and I've had six ties for my three wins. Is this a useful measure? Probably not. Going to depend on the game, right? Like, if Selder was here, for instance, he'd have six ties just from his matchup with Midas, and that does not mean he played it badly. He played it very, very well. So, you know. But I think it's interesting. Uh, he also won a GB. He came second in another. And not only did he win a GB... He set the record. He scored 6.15 per game, 123 points total. This is probably one of the records that's going to stand. He got four nine ones, which is a record. He got two more 8-2s. The rest of his results are great, too. But those really stand out as just racking up an incredible score. Uh, Akiyama is not just a great player, but a great player who is, can do crazy things in a GB format. Is in the semifinals of Triad Wars 14 fascinated to see the um the Akiyama Seto match 
I'm hoping that one joins the uh, the best matches. I'm hoping mine against turds doesn't because I am hoping to win it quickly. But uh, you know, we have we have three matches left in the tournament, and Akiyama Seto is a pretty exciting one to see. I've watched them play some two minute. I'm very curious about what will happen. Uh, either way, will really say a lot, at least to me, about the kind of current hierarchy of uh, tournament players. And yeah, so that's that's our power ranking for this month. Went and babbled about a bunch of things, but I really like the idea of great matches in like tournament history. And uh, let me know if, if that sounds cool to you. Like we can go, ah, yes, remember back in 2022, you know, round one matchup between the somewhat unknown Selder and a finalist, a three-time finalist in Midas, and Selder just applies pressure game after game, but Midas won't break. You know, the stuff like that just, I don't know, it gives a, a fun, sporty feel to things. I've probably gone on a long time for one of these videos. Uh, let's, yeah, these videos shouldn't really take 20 minutes, so let's call it a close. But, yeah. I think I think a fun power a fun rankings and as I said I really like the idea of like great tournament matchups not just being like here's two big names going at it but just here was a match that was just fascinating and well played and interesting takes on what hands and what starters made sense for those hands well played taught me about the rule set um one of the reasons I'm so high on Midas Selder and I'm so high on Piggy Man Turds is they both played before I did, and skimming the games, they seemed kind of a model to me of what should and shouldn't be done on the rule set. And so they were the kind of uh, levels of play that, that really showed you how you should play. I think that's really cool. And I'm sure if I had watched Deli Alsetto before I played, that would have not been the case because, as we saw, it just left me very confused, and I think they were playing kind of over my head level, and so uh, it would have been harder for me to emulate in that sense. But, uh, yeah, maybe I should go back and do Nephilim as well, try to find what were the, the great matchups of Nephilim. But I actually think Triad Wars, my suspicion is I didn't come up with this idea then, because Triad Wars has had more interesting series. I think that's possible. I think um, Nephilim did not have many ties. And so, you know, there were, there were fantastic games here and there, but it's hard to point to a series of games that was really special. And I think mostly in Nephilim, people fell to, you know, the first or second press they faced, making it hard for series to extend. And here, that is in some sense happening too, but we've had a few more really three-game special matches. Thank you. Cheers.